So moving on to your fresh air supply. Um, Chris, pretend I'm a brand new guy to this industry and fresh air comes up. What are the things that I need to know about fresh air? So the first thing about fresh air is that it's an OSHA requirement to have supplied air when you're spraying foam. The sprayer needs to have supplied air. So there are two different kinds of supplied air. There's a low pressure ambient pump system, and then there's a high pressure system as well. The high pressure fresh air system requires a higher CFM air compressor, but some of the advantages are you can have more hose length, and then you can also run cool tubes off of that high pressure so your sprayer can be nice and comfortable while they're spraying foam. A low pressure ambient pump is a little bit more mobile. You can kind of set it around, but you're only gonna get 100 feet of hose and you will not be able to have those cool tube capabilities. What do those run off of, the low pressure style ambient pumps? So those just run off of like a 110 volt um, plug-in. You just plug it into the wall and then you just go from there. Right. So going back to the high pressure systems, uh, what, what other advantages? How can somebody save money or be more profitable by using a high pressure system? And I'm speaking to like some of the personal cooling devices and things like that. What do I need to know about that? So when your sprayers are more comfortable, they get that 30 degree delta T, you know, it's 100 degrees in the attic, but they're getting 70 degree fresh air. They're gonna be a lot more efficient. They're gonna be ready to keep spraying foam. They can hammer through sets. Maybe they don't have to get out of the attic as often. Um, Stay hydrated, don't stay up there forever, but maybe a cooling device is something that can keep you going a little bit longer. Um, it's an investment though, isn't it, for a high pressure system. In addition to this, what other things are needed to run that type of system, buddy? Absolutely, yeah, you need a, a bigger air compressor. So, you know, your normal, let's say it's a three and a half horse electric air compressor that you're using for your pumps and your gun is not gonna be big enough to also run this high pressure fresh air system. So you might have to upgrade to a five horsepower or seven and a half horsepower air compressor, which then you might have to also upgrade your generator as well to maybe let's say a 45 or you know a gen set um, air compressor right. combo unit like we have on this rig here. So there's a lot of different things that kind of feed off each other. So it's not you just can't plug this bad boy into your rig right. and get cooling devices. There are some other considerations that go along with that as well. You need, you need a bigger air compressor, potentially a bigger air dryer, and a bigger generator to power the bigger air compressor to power this system. So Correct. if you look at it, like Chris said, it's not as simple as buying this unit and plugging it in, and all of a sudden all your guys are running around with cooling devices. Um, there's other considerations which is why we wanna have these conversations when you're building your rig. It is very, very difficult to get one of these retrofitted without having to potentially swap out your air compressor and maybe even your generator. However, we have this conversation on the front end and we explain the expectation for you. You'll, you'll see why it's important to talk about it and we're not gonna not talk about it. We wanna make sure you understand what the capabilities of a high pressure system include. The biggest one is cooling devices, followed closely by hose length. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, uh, a cooler sprayer, more productivity, more bags of money you're going home with in your yeah. spray foam rig. Yeah, buddy. So what, what about masks versus hoods? What's your opinion on that? I get asked that question, should I have this or should I have that? Um, explain the difference between masks and hoods a little bit. So a mask obviously is just going to go right over your face. A hood is going to come down and, and cover your whole body. So you're going to get more of a protection factor from a hood than you will with a mask. And when you're doing cooling devices, that cooling is only going to your face as opposed to cooling your entire body. With a hood, you're going to need more CFM, so you might not be able to run a two-man system as opposed to a two-man system with masks 
where you could, depending on your compressor size. Yeah, right on. That uh, having cool air go all over your whole head and face uh, adds some value. Plus, anything that is in contact with spray foam, what does it look like usually? I mean, it's covered with spray foam. Covered in foam. And they get beat up and tossed around. You know, hoods uh, offer a, a disposable feature, right? That you, you take the, the material off and you can replace it with a new hood. Um, if you look at that, you know, you can get a, a 10 or 15, 25 pack of those replacement hoods versus a mask could exceed a hundred dollars far exceed a hundred dollars for some of the high pressure masks. Um, how long is that going to last and how long can, uh, the installers take care of it before it's covered with foam? If you think that everything is disposable, that's in touch with spray foam, you're right. Every, yeah. Almost everything is at some level disposable. I would rather be throwing away cheaper hood covers than replacing masks. Another thing with masks is that you have to be clean shaved. So you've got to have a little bit of more of a baby face like I do than Grizzly Adams over here with his beard. He would not be able to wear a mask where I would be able to. And also with a mask, you need to get fit tested right. if that's an option as well. If only all installers look like you. <laughs> <laughs>